Sunshine. It is 6 a.m. and uh, we are going into Rodeo Weekend and Super Bowl Weekend. Kind of busy here around San Antonio. Starting at 65 degrees though with some humidity. So if you're a fan of the humidity, here it is. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you at 6 a.m. on your Friday, February 9th. Happy Friday. We made it to Friday. We hope you have some exciting plans this weekend and it's not going to be cold by any means. No, <laughs> not at all. Second day of the rodeo and the first full weekend of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Uh, we were out there yesterday and it was getting warm and mm -hmm. humid in the afternoon. That's kind of tough when you got boots on and then today's going to be pretty much the same thing if you're heading on out there. A little bit of rain over the weekend, but I'll tell you what, we've got some great, great rodeo weather and just great weather in general coming in here in a couple of days. Right now, it looks as though there's a little sheen on the road out there at the airport, and uh, we've got slight bit of rain showing up on radar. Not much, and you almost have to kind of kind of squint to see it, and these are extremely light little showers. We've had these few little specks that have moved through in the past couple of hours, so yeah, there are a few damp spots on the roads. Obviously, this is nothing of any consequence, just enough to, like I said, make the roads kind of damp out there. Hints of fog. There are a lot of kind of some technical difficulties. A lot of uh, usual reporting spots aren't reporting in this morning. A four miles visibility out there at Port SA 6 New Braunfels, so just those hints of it out there and temperatures are well this is what our normal high is right now 66 degrees that's the case all around the area all this humidity and cloud cover is helping to keep uh, temperatures up there mold mountain cedar both on the low side did come up a little bit from the previous day's reading temperatures pretty much aren't going to be moving this morning and then we make it up to 70 at noon, perhaps a couple of peaks of sunshine, but definitely warm and humid, 75 degrees. Then we start to see some of those rain chances. Tomorrow's going to be on the wetter side, and then Sunday things start to clear out, and then great weather, like I said, comes on in here for the first of next week. All the details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, it's been pretty quiet on the road so far. Yeah, so far, so, so good, Mike, especially to start your Friday a little bit. Uh, start the weekend here, taking a look at I-10 and Cal Callahan traffic moving pretty good there. I-10 upper levels do expect things to get a little bit busier during our six o'clock hour, but so far so good. A couple smaller things to let you know about. We have a stalled vehicle being reported I-35 southbound at Ritterman Road. Keep that in mind if you're headed out in that direction. And a little bit south of that, we still have this stalled vehicle that's being reported at I-10 eastbound at WW White Road. Not causing too many major delays. This is going to be our traffic going to I-10 and 410. So we've been talking about a lot of closures throughout the past month or so. Uh, one bit of good news is that on the northwest side we will not be shutting down 1604 and I-10. That interchange, that interchange will stay open this weekend, so that's good news for our drivers there. But there is another uh, significant weekend closure for our drivers on the east side. So all the main lanes, Loop 410 southbound to East Houston, will be shut down this weekend. Construction crews doing some work there. So that's going to start tonight at 8 o'clock and run through Friday and run through Monday, excuse me, at 5 a.m. So tonight, 8 o'clock, run through Monday, 5 a.m. It's just going to be the southbound lanes of 410 all the way to East Houston. So we'll continue to give you more updates on this construction as we make our way through the morning. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Now to an Amber Alert that went out to phones across the state last night. So have you seen these people? Law enforcement in Houston are looking for one-year-old Noah Johnson. They're also looking for 38-year-old Camila Johnson in connection to the abduction. They were last seen in a white 2007 GMC Yukon with Texas license plate STM7097. If you know anything that can lead to them, you are asked to call the Harris County Constable at the number on your screen, and that's 281-488-4040. Top of your morning headlines as Donald Trump claims victory in Nevada's Republican presidential caucus this morning. The U.S. Supreme Court seems poised to reject attempts to kick the former president off the 2024 ballot. A definitive ruling for the leading Republican candidate for president would largely end efforts in Colorado, Maine and elsewhere to prevent his name from appearing on the ballot. After more than two hours of arguments yesterday, justices raised questions of whether Trump can be disqualified from being president again due to insurrection claims during the 2020 election. Their main concern was whether Congress must act before states can invoke a constitutional provision adopted after the U.S. Civil War to prevent former office holders who engaged in insurrection from ever holding office again. Meanwhile, we have new information on the report over President Biden's handling of classified documents. 
Special counsel found that Biden willfully retained and shared some classified information. However, as ABC's Ike Joshi reports, he concluded that no criminal charges are warranted. President Biden angrily defending his ability to do his job. My memory is fine. My memory, take a look at what I've done since I've become president. It's in response to special counsel Robert Hur's investigation into Biden's handling of classified documents. In the 345-page report issued Thursday, Hur, who was appointed by former President Donald Trump, wrote that his assessment of Biden's mental acuity and power of recall was hazy, fuzzy, faulty, and having significant limitations. The report suggests that Biden did not willfully retain the documents and that they could have been brought to the locations by mistake. Hur adding the evidence does not establish Mr. Biden's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. While Biden will not face charges, Hur describes their interview from October, noting Biden did not remember when his term as vice president either began or ended. Hur also writing Biden would likely present himself to a jury, as he did during our interview of him, as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. I'm well-meaning and I'm an elderly man and I know what the hell I'm doing. I've been president and I put this country back on its feet. I don't need his recommendation. In terms of the leading presidential candidates' ages, President Biden is 81 years old and former President Trump is 77. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. 606, 65 degrees. The rodeo road trip is underway for our San Antonio Spurs. Still to come, a recap of their matchup in Orlando and some trade moves for the silver and black. And the person here walking is, is Sarah Acosta here in the studio. <laughs> Those boots were made for walking. Outside with live cam on a Friday morning. Glad you're with us. Uh, it's kind of hazy out there, almost a, a, just a hint of fog. But first, Valentine's Day is approaching and millions of flowers will be given. But what kind of message do you really want to send your loved ones? Well, in this segment of Gardening with Kset, our Sarah Costa is showing us the Victorian language of flowers. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, guys. Yeah, what message do you really want to send? Do you have an ex? Do you have someone you're about to break up with? Uh. Do you have someone you want to, you know, that you're very devoted to? We're going to deep dive into it, into what certain flowers or plants mean when you gift them to that special someone. Don't order your Valentine's Day flowers just yet. Watch this to know the message you're sending. For example, red roses mean love and passion, and yellow roses mean friendship. But did you know the meanings of these flowers originate from the Victorian era when people would send flowers to send a certain message? A couple of years ago, I stumbled upon this book, The Complete Language of Flowers by Teresa Dietz, where she breaks down all those Victorian era meanings behind flowers. I got hooked. So let's begin. New relationship, but don't want to come off too strong. Send tulips, especially orange. It means you fascinate me. Watch out for hydrangeas. I know they're beautiful, but it can mean you're cold. I don't like you. You know, maybe reserve this one if you didn't want to break up before Valentine's Day. That would be good. For Galentines, moms or grandmas, send pink carnations. It's a gal's gal's flower. Sending flowers for, hey, good luck on that interview. Thinking of you or hang in there, send sunflowers. They mean opportunity, good luck, and strength. For the ex that did you wrong, dead leaves. It means you're dead to me. And for your longtime spouse, get them a cactus. It means ardent love. AKA, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Hey, happy Valentine's Day. I would love a cactus. <laughs> I would, yeah. and because you know what? Like you can keep growing it. They don't die. You take care of it. Um, <laughs> or the succulents are cute. Yeah. You can have like yeah. an arrangement of that. So there's a book on this. Mm, there you go. There's a book on this. The complete um, language. Of, of flowers. flowers. This is not stuff I'm making up. This is from the Victorian <laughs> era where they would do this. People right. were witty, they were smart, and Amazon they... was like, hey, finally somebody bought our book. <laughs> But I, I stumbled upon this a couple years ago okay. after reading a book about it, and I just was like, oh, my God, this is so good. All right, so okay. what you got? Um, so this is kind of my favorite one. Okay. For the narcissist in your life. Uh -oh. Don't I, spend any money on flowers. <laughs> <laughs> give them daffodils. And actually, right now, Trader Joe's has daffodils. Um, Trader What's Joe's has daffodils set out in front, and it looks like, you know, beautiful flower, but it's like, hey. What does it mean? You're a narcissist. Oh, you mean, it means you're yeah. a narcissist. Yes, yeah. okay. literally the scientific meaning is narcissus. Yeah, I was like, mm. and it's also um, poisonous. So, oh, there you go. Do you deliver that with a mirror? 
I don't know. <laughs> How, hey, however yourself. you want to do it, Steph. That's your personal preference. And are you narcissistic by even thinking about all this and gifting that kind of flour? You know. That'll bake your noodle. Um, another one for for marriage, peonies. We have, we have music, so. Uh, oh, I was yeah. going to say that was that means happy marriage. Um, but also be careful with orchids. We talked about this earlier because orchids tend to be like the show off flower. Like, look how much money I spent on you. Right. But it can mean like fertility. So unless you're like in a committed relationship, mm -hmm. get the orchid. Okay. 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 <laughs> we'll remember I'll just that. give you this bookmark and you can look over it. There's some... <laughs> okay, Mike is over here. Okay, bonsai tree. What does that mean? We'll be back. As long as they're pretty. It's okay. So the rodeo road trip is off to uh, kind of a rough start after Wendy and the Spurs went 0-2 in Florida. They fell to Miami Wednesday night in Orlando last night after trailing by as many as nine points in the first quarter. Keldon Johnson goes three, tying this at 20 with seven seconds left. Joe Ingles responds with a triple, and Orlando led 23-20 after one frame, uh, after one rather. Second frame, Magic hit back-to-back -back dunks, first from Fonz Wagner who scored a game-high 34, and then from Jalen Suggs. Then it's Wagner for a three again, and just before half, the Magic led 61-44 at the break. Yeah, I'll stop, Mike. Third quarter, it was the Devin Vassell show as he tried to get the Spurs back in it, driving in for a tough layup. Then on the break, he stops and pops a three. Late in the frame, he drives in for two of his 23 third quarter points. He had 30 on the night. Spurs were down 98-85 after three. Wemby scored 15 points in 22 minutes, but the Spurs lost 127 to 111. All right, so they'll continue the rodeo road trip tomorrow night up in New York against the Brooklyn Nets. Tip-off is set for 5 p.m. And staying with the Spurs, the NBA trade deadline has officially come and gone. It's true. San Antonio actually shipped off Doug McDermott before the 2 p.m. trade deadline yesterday. Spurs acquired forward Marcus Morris Sr., and a 2029 second rounder along with cash in exchange for McDermott as part of a three team trade with the Pacers and the 76ers. And Spurs forward Jeremy Sohan was named by NBA Commissioner Adam Silver to the 2024 Panini Rising Star roster as an injury replacement. This is Sohan's second consecutive Rising Star selection and he joins his teammate Victor Wimayama who was previously named a Rising Star. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. In some quick NFL news, Texans quarterback C.J. Stroud named the AP NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year. His teammate Will Anderson was named AP NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year. Former Texans wide receiver Andre Johnson was elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The first Texan to get the nod. And the Cowboys are set to hire Mike Zimmer as their new defensive coordinator after Dan Quinn left for the Washington Commanders. All right, well, time now, 6.16, and time to check back with RJ. Yeah, guys, uh, but I loved Andre Johnson watching him play with the Texans, but it also reminds me that uh, I'm getting pretty old because <laughs> I remember when, uh, yeah, he was a great Houston Texan, probably J.J. Watt, the next uh, Houston Texan, yeah. to get into the Hall of Fame. Guys, quick check of traffic here. U.S. Night General at Mullen. Traffic moving pretty good in both directions there. 281 at Loop 410, same situation there as well. So just a couple of things to let you know about. Stalled vehicle, I-10 westbound, Hebner Road, driver's on the northwest side. Keep that one in mind if you're headed westbound on I-10. And we're still following this stalled vehicle there in the east side, which is there at I-10 eastbound at WW White Road. So it's now starting to cause a little bit of delays here, especially on WW White Road. So uh, it's my uh, indication that it's actually off the highway and more on WW White Road, but still a very, very busy area there to begin with. All right, one more quick check of Trans Guide. And we also have uh, some drone video that we want to show our folks here if you haven't been with us throughout all of Good morning, San Antonio. So we've been talking a lot about this metal plate that was placed on I-10 West at Frio. This is on the upper level, so we went ahead, got some case at 12, our drone video out there, get a better look at exactly what this looks like in terms of uh, for our drivers and what they're kind of coming up against here. So we've been told that this is all part of a big project there, I-10 at the Y, and this is a temporary cover over some bridge joints uh, that they are installing 
on that upper level there of I-10 West. Now, the big takeaway here is that this, these metal plates are gonna be popping up all over that area there on the westbound lanes, the eastbound lanes, as they continue this construction work out there. And uh, I asked TechSot, I was like, is there any way we could get a smoother plate out there? Well, they told me that they need to be an inch over the level there because they need to do the work underneath it to add in the bridge joints. So a lot of questions, a lot of concerns about this. We wanted to get our drone video out there and show exactly what people are looking at. They are, they do have temporary signage out there to let people know that there's a bump that yes. is on the roadway out and, there. And they added asphalt to both sides, but that <laughs> really doesn't help. I mean, yeah. it's still a big bump. Yeah, when you see it, it definitely kind of comes surprises mm -hmm. you. You're kind of like, oh, okay, here we go. Don't slam on your brakes. <laughs> Don't yeah. slam on the brakes, no, especially yeah. not on the highway. Yeah, just take your time. And uh, like Stephanie mentioned earlier, just be cautious yeah. around there. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. going through there just, are just like, ah, but I get, you know, even, but it is funny because even though we we know about it, we've you know, been yeah. talking about it all week, I was just like, oh, here it is, here it is, here it is, so be careful. Back to football. Mm -hmm. I guess you can't argue with C.J. Stroud. I oh, mean, no, he was no. great. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, What a year for the Texans. Lions yeah. fan, you got Laporta, you got Gibbs, the running back, the tight, the tight end running back. But, yeah, Stroud, Stroud did yeah. darn good job. So. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, uh, school bus. Speaking of uh, yeah. rookies out of school, I'm Rookies out of school. <laughs> I don't know. Young people. Doing my best here. 64 <laughs> degrees this morning. Some patchy fog, a little bit of mist, some light little sprinkles around the area. Maybe a couple of damp roads out there. Warm and humid. I mean, we're looking at almost like mid-late spring temperatures around here. 75 degrees. So if you are planning on heading to the rodeo today, um, it's going to be warm out there. All right, take a look. I love this picture. Good morning from Seguin. All the turkeys out there. Look at those things. Man, I've never seen so many. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. I love that. All right, here's what's going on. Upper level steering winds. We've got this. This is the, the same basic pattern out there to the west. Produce all of that really, really heavy rain out there out in uh, Southern California. Now it has weakened, broken down a little bit, but we're getting all the moisture coming in here, not only from the Gulf, but also these disturbances. And as the disturbances ride along this southerly branch, uh, the jet stream coming on in here, that's what's going to give us the chance for some rain. And as this low moves in a little bit closer throughout the day tomorrow, then we get a second bit of energy that's going to move through uh, early on Sunday. But by then Sunday, late morning even, this low is going to actually, it's far enough to the north of us, it's going to help to push everything on out of here. Backside of it, we get a front moving on through, and then we've got some beautiful, beautiful weather coming in here for the first half of next week. Notice how there's a lot of this blue on the map, so we'll have some cooler temperatures. And then by the end of the week, got another low digging down here to the uh, west and southwest of us, and that's going to give us another rain chance then by the latter part of next week. Back to today, as you can see, it looks a little damp out there on the uh, on the highway at uh, the airport. And we've had a few of these little sprinkly showers that have been showing up around the area. Not much, though. I mean, just a, a couple of them here and there, and that's pretty much about it. Just enough to make things uh, sort of damp out there. Here's a computer model, and this model is initializing with some of that little bit of light rain out there this morning. That just kind of dwindles off. We'll have a lot of clouds throughout the day. If you see a peak of sunshine, fine. That's just going to kind of add to the heat and humidity this afternoon. Then we're watching another batch of rain developing way out there to the west, and that's going to work its way across the area late tonight, overnight hours tomorrow, and we'll have some showers, even a couple of thunderstorms around the area throughout the day tomorrow. It's not going to rain constantly everywhere, but a few of those storms, and that'll be the case in through the late afternoon hours. Then we get sort of a break in the action. Also, we're going to have to watch out for one or two of those, maybe on the strong side. Storm Prediction Center does have us under that very small risk for a, a stray strong to severe storm with high winds and hail that are going to be the, uh, the biggest threats with that. So here's what it looks like over the next seven days. 75 today, very warm, very humid. Tomorrow down somewhat thanks to all the clouds, some of that rain around there. Watch out for a stronger storm. Then we'll have some rain, another wave kind of pick up overnight, tomorrow night into early Sunday. Clears on out, good looking in the afternoon, kind of breezy. That front moves on through here. And that sets up some gorgeous, gorgeous weather into the first half of next week. Low 40s, low 60s, actually a little bit below normal and plenty of sunshine leading in toward Valentine's Day. Whole lot more after this. This is a hot flash. This is a hot flash.
But this is a not flash. There's big news for women going through menopause. Vioza, a prescription treatment for moderate to severe vasomotor symptoms. The medical name for hot flashes and night sweats. With hormone-free Vioza, you can have fewer hot flashes and more not flashes. Vioza is proven to reduce the number and severity of hot flashes day and night. For some women, it can start working in as early as one week. Don't use Vioza if you have cirrhosis, severe kidney problems, kidney failure, or take CYP1A2 inhibitors. Increased liver blood test values may occur. Your doctor will check them before and during treatment. Most common side effects include stomach pain, diarrhea, difficulty sleeping, back pain, and hot flashes. I get a good feeling. Ask your doctor about hormone-free Vioza and enjoy more not flashes. Eating morning consumer headlines, a crackdown on artificial intelligence. The FCC has banned robocalls using fake voices to scam people. The decision follows a rash of bogus calls last month, mimicking, mimicking President Biden's voice, urging people not to vote in the New Hampshire primary. Apple just rolled out a redesigned iCloud app for Windows. The goal is to make the onboarding and setup process easier for iPhone and iPad users who don't own a Mac. So it has a range of new features and you can use a physical key for Apple ID. And if you use Google Maps, look out for some changes. The search bar no longer covers the full screen, helping things look less cluttered. A new feature also shows weather conditions in the location where users are traveling to. Time now, 626 and 65 degrees for now. Quite a bit of activity showing up on TransGuide. This camera at I-10 and Woodstone. What's going on out there? RJ will talk to us after the break. If you're just now waking up or joining us here on KSAT 12, let's all take a live look outside with live cam as we wait for the sun to come up. The great news, it is Friday morning and it's not raining quite yet. That is the best news. Mm -hmm. Happy Friday. It is February 9th. Yeah, we made it to Friday. Uh, I, I love that it's such an eventful weekend here. A lot going on. Second day of San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Mike Ostrage was was out there yesterday, and yeah. you kind of caught up in the moment, right? Oh, it was fantastic. And you know, when you see like going sort of behind the scenes, what a lot of people don't see in a lot of the animal barns and everything, and just the the masses of people there, which is so amazing. You know, the the logistics behind everything, and of course the food too. So oh, funnel cake, favorite. Yeah, mac and cheese with brisket on it. So, little, you know, sausage wrap and all that stuff. Anyway, uh, we were talking about a little bit of rain. There has been some few light showers out there. There have been a few light showers out there this morning. Nothing is really showing up as of right now. The road may be damp by uh, 410. Looks like there's a little bit of a sheen right now. 66 degrees. This is our normal high temperature. And dew points at 62. When you get above 60, you start to feel some of the humidity out there. So you definitely, definitely notice it this morning. And as far as rain, obviously not a lot is showing up on radar. Just a few of those light little, I mean, very, very light sprinkles. We had a couple that moved through here in town. And there may be still one or two of those just little, little spits, little sprinkles here and there. So don't be surprised if you see one or two of those. There are a couple of spots with some fog, not anything too awfully thick, just some hints of it around the area. So watch that, especially in the next hour, a couple of hours as we get in towards sunrise. It's about 20 after 7, and then right after that, everybody is well above normal. Most everybody, with the, just a couple of exceptions, well up into the, uh, the 60s right now. And Molden Mountain Cedar, both low, but both came up slightly from the previous day's reading. So today, some fog this morning, clouds. If there's a peak of sunshine, yeah, but mostly just cloudy skies, a sprinkle or two, mid 70s, and lots of humidity out there. So get ready. If you're going to the, uh, the rodeo today, you're not going to need a jacket. Tomorrow, a few showers around the area and some storms. So it won't be raining constantly, but there will be those showers around here. And we're going to be in the mid upperish 60s tomorrow, so down just a little bit. And we'll have some rain tomorrow night, late into early Sunday. Then we start to clear on out. 70 front comes through here, and that's going to bring in some absolutely spectacular weather for the first part of next week. Cooler temperatures and plenty of sunshine. Details, just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. It is, is it still, I should say, quiet? Near no, actually, Mike, we've seen our first big incident on our Friday morning commutes here, and it's 
for our drivers here on the northwest side. Take a look behind me. We have our Transguide traffic camera up there. I-10 at Woodstone Drive. So this is going to be the westbound lanes of I-10. You can see that we have multiple main lanes shut down right now. The camera's a little bit blurry, but there is traffic trickling through on the far left-hand side of I-10 West at Woodstone. And we're going to show you the map here in just a bit, indicate, show you exactly some of the backup that we're seeing. So here we go. Yeah, I-10 West at Woodstone. So this is going to be affecting all of our traffic headed past Hebner Road. And if you're going to be headed up to De Zavala, keep this in mind, you will likely run into this. So again, being reported right now is a car fire. We have at least three main lanes blocked there, I-10 West um, at, at Woodstone. And again, these, this, now our maps are indicating there is a pretty good delay in this area. Wurzbach Road may be an exit or a possible option if you want to get around this, head up to Expo Boulevard or even go all the way to Vance Jackson. Those are some options if you want to maybe kind of make your way around this mess. The rest of the city, everything else looking pretty good. We have Loop 410 and San Pedro. We have an accident being reported there at the near the San Antonio International Airport, but doesn't appear to be causing any major delays at the moment. Again, biggest thing we're looking at here, I-10 westbound at Woodstone, multiple main lanes blocked right now because of a reported car fire. We will continue to follow the very latest and give you more updates when they become available. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Get cover right here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we got shots fired. Shots fired. New this morning, San Antonio Police Department releasing body cam footage from an intense gunfight between SWAT and an ex Bear County Sheriff's deputy. Happened back on January 9th in the 6900 block of Timber Creek on the far west side around 2 o'clock in the morning. 43 year old Jose Vasquez was shot multiple times by Officer Jesse Noriega following a standoff. Police arrived on scene after receiving 911 calls about a man shooting a gun. SAPD says SWAT were called after Vasquez began firing at patrol cars. Officers then evacuated the complex. One officer who was next to and inside an armored vehicle captured audio of the shots fired by Noriega. <laughs> That was me. That was me. That was me. Get a gun pointed at us here. According to SAPD, at about 3.30 a.m., SWAT officer Noriega shot at Vasquez after seeing him point his gun at officers from a back patio. According to SAPD, officers administered first aid to Vasquez before he was taken to a hospital by EMS. A police spokesperson says his body cam was not on during the shooting due to a inadvertent contact with the armored vehicle itself. Vasquez was booked into the Bear County Jail and charged with two counts of deadly conduct with a firearm and aggravated assault against a public servant. His bonds were set at $300,000. Officer Noriega, who has 23 years of service, was placed on administrative duty. And we are getting a closer look at the newest addition to the Shirts Police Department. Officers will start training with the department's first drone next week. So five city employees will start that training, but the police chief expects that group to grow. The drone program is in its early stages, and in the next month or so, police predict a drastic change in their response. We can use it for lost persons. We can use it for crime scenes. All of this is a force multiplier allowing our officers to more quickly, more efficiently, and more proficiently document all those scenes so that we can get back into service. The drone cost nearly $20,000, and the Shirt Citizens Police Alumni Association was able to buy the drone through a grant, donations, and a fundraiser. Added street safety measures are coming to the south side. The Pleasant Road Morrison Boulevard project is one step closer to being done. This is in the Harlandale McCollum neighborhood between Fitch and Loop 410. Upgrades planned uh, include medians, signal intersections, and mid block crossings for pedestrians. The city hopes this project will reduce the number of accidents. A meeting was held at Harlandale High School last night for community members to voice their opinions about the project before it's finalized. We're kind of at 60%, so this is sort of the, the, the final plan for this. But there might be some added improvements that we can look at. And getting that input is going to be important as we begin to plan the feasibility studies, design studies uh, for other road improvements along this corridor. 
The goal is for a final design plan set in place by summer with the idea of starting construction this fall. A San Antonio legend was honored last night for influence on the Alamo City. There was a dedication ceremony at Lanier High School for the late Bell Ortiz. Lanier's music building is now known as the Bell Ortiz Music Building. Ortiz introduced mariachi curriculum into public schools first in SAISD. She pioneered the nation's first high school ballet folklorico program at Lanier High School and introduced the first high school mariachi program at Jefferson High School. Ortiz passed away in July of last year. At last night's ceremony, people told us what Bell Ortiz meant to them. It's just a very special evening because we are doing that. We're recognizing the contributions she's had to our movement uh, for decades and decades and decades. Last night's dedication ceremony also featured performances by the Lanier Mariachi Orgullo de San Antonio and the SAISD All-Star Mariachi. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. And all right now, let's all take a live look at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, all lit up in the early morning hours there in Sin City, home of Super Bowl 58. About oh, 72,000 fans are expected inside the stadium this weekend. Now, even though we're still a couple of days away, the hype still escalating as the San Francisco 49ers get ready to take on the Kansas City Chiefs. Our Sarah Costa joins us now to preview all the things going on around the big game itself. Hey, good morning. Good morning. I'm excited. I've never been so excited to watch a football game. <laughs> so the am. NFL fans already know why they're going to be glued to the screen. But this time, a whole other group of fans will be there, not just for the commercials, but of course, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. A possible Taylor Swift sighting is one of the many reasons people who don't follow football might watch the Super Bowl. Her boyfriend plays for the Chiefs, and she's attended 12 of his games this season. Fun to kind of gather the Swifties in the Chiefs kingdom and uh, open them up to uh, the, the football world, the sports world. Some ads this year feature reunions from TV hits like Friends. Okay. Have we met? 30 Rock. So I hired body doubles to help me out. <laughs> oh, Tina. And Parks and Rec. Have a blast anytime, anywhere. And with anyone? Las Vegas is hosting the Super Bowl for the first time, and the American Gaming Association predicts a new record of almost 68 million Americans betting on it. As for the performers, DJ Tiesto says he won't be at the game as planned. He cites a family emergency that's forcing him to return home. But Usher is this year's halftime performer. I hope I get to play the halftime show someday, man. And there'll be a taste of San Antonio in Vegas, just in time for the Super Bowl. Whataburger expanding into the desert. The chain opened a two-story restaurant on the Las Vegas Strip just two days ago. This is not your average Whataburger. In addition to the typical menu, this Whataburger also features a selection of wings, and it's joined in the same building with the pizzeria and a tap house where you can get 120 beers on tap. You can read all about that new location right now on our website, ksat.com. Mark, Steph. All right. Thank you, Sarah. 641, 65 degrees. And just ahead, over 20 of San Antonio's best brunch spots will be on display tomorrow for a good cause. We're going to explain in just a few moments. Outside with live cam as we head into rodeo weekend. The sun is just now starting to show up on that eastern horizon, but not by much. You're watching DMSA. Welcome back. It's exactly 645 in your Friday morning. Looking ahead, the 7th Annual United We Brunch event is happening tomorrow, which benefits nonprofits across our area. KSET 12 producer Haley Power spoke with United Way San Antonio and got a behind the scenes look at one of the featured restaurants before this weekend. United We Brunch is back for its seventh year and it's expected to be a huge event. Tickets are already sold out and all the money goes back to our community. It's helping uh, San Antonio's young children, students, families and people in crisis kind of get the stability that they need. The special event features more than 20 of San Antonio's best brunch spots and this year United We Brunch is happening at the Witty Museum. The Witty is an obvious choice because it's one of San Antonio's big staples. It's one of its longest running institutions and it's honestly just a beautiful venue. In addition to the beautiful venue, attendees will get a chance to taste some scrumptious food, including these German chocolate pancakes from San Antonio staple Magnolia Pancake House. 
German chocolate pancakes are part of our seasonal menu. And since it's flowing in the same time as United Wheat Brunch, people love these things. This is the second year in a row that United Way San Antonio has been involved with a special brunch. The organization has a vast reach over our community, helping nonprofits in our area, running the city's 211 information line, as well as bringing in volunteers through volunteersanantonio.org's website. You can learn more about United Way and United We Brunch by heading to our website, ksat.com. Haley Powers, KSAT 12 News. And United We Brunch is happening tomorrow at the Woody Museum from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Now, as we mentioned, it is already sold out, but there are so many ways you can help out the United Way. So we're going to have all that information on our website at ksat.com. Well, this time of morning, one of the busiest roads in San Antonio, one of them is Interstate 10. Let's check back with RJ. Yeah, guys, and uh, following the latest here on this uh, reported car fire there, I-10 westbound at uh, Woodstone. So we're looking here at TransGuide traffic cameras here. This is the westbound traffic making your way uh, in our direction here. Uh, westbound traffic, you can see that we have multiple main lanes blocked at the moment. Traffic is slowly trickling through on the far left-hand lane here, but again, causing a major, major backup. Let's show you exactly what we're looking at here in the maps. And we now see that traffic is built all the way back to Wurzbach Road. So again, this is going be affecting all of our drivers that are headed up past Hebner Road, that are headed towards Days of Allah Road, and even headed towards the far northwest side. Again, three main lanes blocked at the moment because of a reported car fire, I-10 westbound at Woodstone Drive, something to keep in mind. I'm looking at this as a two-mile stretch here and at least causing a 13-minute delay for your morning commute. The rest of the city, want to let you know about this uh, one crash off of uh, San Pedro Avenue in Loop uh, 410. Uh, that's going to be near the San Antonio Airport. It looks like they're clearing out that crash. That was reported earlier by the San Antonio Fire Department. So hopefully they get that cleared out near the airport. But biggest thing we're following at the moment, I-10 westbound at Woodstone Drive, guys. Thank, Thank you for the update, RJ. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Just got some information in uh, down around Falls City. There was a small earthquake last night. Oh, so okay. yeah, USGS. Uh, and here's some of the, uh, the data on it. About uh, almost two miles to the south southeast of Falls City. It was right before 11 o'clock last night, four miles deep. And so not a, not a big one, but if you uh, kind of felt a little rumbling there, that was the reason why. And love this picture there. Great start to the day. This was taken yesterday. Yes, absolutely beautiful picture. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot right there. All right, we're not really seeing any glow of the uh, sunrise this morning. Got a lot of clouds out there and we do have a little bit of rain. Some of the roads in and around town may be damp. Obviously, there's nothing really showing up right now, but over the course of the past couple of hours, there have been just and you almost have to you blink, you miss them. These few little specks of rain here and there, some out in portions of the hill country again, just enough to make things kind of damp out there. So Allow yourself a little extra time heading off to work and school. Mid 60s right now. We're at what our normal average high temperature is. Some patchy fog hasn't seen a lot, just a few areas of reduced visibility. And then we're going to keep a lot of clouds around here throughout the day. 70 at noon and then warm and hu hot, almost hot and humid this time of year. I mean, we're going to be about 10 degrees above normal, 75 degrees. Peak or two of sunshine, which is only going to add to that, kind of like yesterday, you know, add to that, that heat and humidity out there. Now, as far as rain chances, of course, computer models are initializing with these little light sprinkles and see how this kind of paints it in, but obviously it's not that full. So that's where you got to kind of, you know, interpolate these computer models a little bit, I guess you could say. A lot of clouds, like I said, hanging around today. Then we see another batch of rain, which is going to be developing later on this evening out to the west, working its way across the area in through the overnight hours to tomorrow morning, even a couple of thunderstorms, and that'll be the case throughout the day. It won't rain constantly. There will be a couple of storms, though, and one or two of those may be on the, the strong side. So just uh, if you're heading on out, take a rain jacket, light umbrella with you, and that's going to be throughout the daytime hours. Then we see a little break in the action. Then we're going to have another brief round of rain early, early on Sunday morning. And again, Storm Prediction Center does have just about the entire area under the threat that one or two of those storms could be strong, potentially severe high winds. Hail be the biggest threats with that. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind tomorrow if you are heading on out. And then, like I said, Sunday, early rain clears out nicely. 75 today, 68 tomorrow, 70 Sunday. 
Still a mild start on Sunday morning with that few uh, couple of showers out there. But yeah, the afternoon's going to be great, kind of on the breezy side. And this front moves on through. That's going to bring in some gorgeous, gorgeous weather for the first part of next week. We'll actually be a little bit below normal. I mean, look at these high temperature Monday, almost 15 degrees below what today's high temperature is going to be. So jackets in the morning and may want to keep one handy in through the afternoon and very pretty on Valentine's Day as well. We're going to wrap things up after this. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the story that we're all following, the reaction and political fallout from the special counsel report on President Biden's handling of classified information that also raised questions about his mental acuity. And an exclusive look at a new report on fraud, just how much it's costing Americans and what you can do to protect yourself. You'll see it all on GMA. And this Sunday is International Day of Women and Girls in Science. And in honor of that, Girls Think San Antonio is going to hold its 18th annual Rocket into the Future Science Festival this weekend. So it's a great way to celebrate girls in science and get them involved. There will be over 30 booths with fun and interactive STEM activities for everyone. That festival is happening tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Cast Med High School on the southeast side. It's now five minutes till seven and scary traffic on I-10 right now. Yeah, guys, a sea of brake lights out there on the northwest side, I-10 westbound at Hebner. So this is the effects here from that crash, that vehicle fire that was reported a little bit further up the road there at I-10 and Woodstone. And uh, you could just see that traffic is just slowly moving through this area. I mean, it's just, it's pretty much nearly at a standstill at this point. Let's show you the maps real quick here, because again, this car fire accident being reported there, I-10 Woodstone in the Hebner area, it's causing a significant delay all the way to Wurzbach Road, as we just saw from this TransGuide traffic shots here. Take caution if you are headed out to this area. Mike? All right, watch out for a couple of damp spots on the roads, a little patch of fog, cloudy skies out there, very warm, very humid. There's those few little light sprinkles, not amounting to anything, but again, just to make the roads kind of damp. We've had a few overnight here in town. A little bit of fog, not much. Just watch it in the next couple of hours. Temperatures are pretty much where we should be in the afternoon, and then we're going to be 75. So we're going to be 10 degrees above normal later on today. Very warm, very humid. And then tomorrow we do have some showers, a couple of thunderstorms around the area. Not raining constantly, but they'll be you know here and there, even a couple of strong ones. Then we clear out Sunday afternoon and beautiful to start next week. All right, Super Bowl picks, Mike. Uh, I'm going to take Chiefs. Steph? I uh, can't go against the Chiefs. Chiefs, Kansas City. Okay, <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh my God.